To simplify fractions, divide top and bottom by the same value. This same value is a common factor. So if I want to write 6 eighths with common factors revealed, I can write 6 as 2 times 3. I can write 8 as 2 times 4. Usually with factors in mathematics, we want you to think of things that multiply. 2 times 3 give you 6, so 2 and 3 are factors of 6. But factors also have the property that they will divide out evenly. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. And 8 divided by 2 is 4. So 2 is a common factor of 6 and 8. I chose to divide by 2 and divide by 2. What I really did, 2 over 2 is just a strange looking 1, because 2 divided by 2 is 1. So if I divide 6 eighths by 2 over 2 and get 3 fourths, did I change the value of what I was given? Well, let's take a look. If I want to represent 6 eighths with this circle, I first look at the denominator of 8. This tells me to divide my circle into eighths. Then I look at the numerator of 6, and this tells me to shade in 6 eighths. So I've represented 6 eighths with this circle. Now for 3 fourths, I first look at the denominator of 4. This tells me to divide the whole into fourths. The numerator of 3 tells me to shade in 3 fourths. So I represented 3 fourths with this circle. And visually you can see that 6 eighths is the same amount of stuff as 3 fourths. So I could say that these are equal. So if I divide the numerator and denominator by the same factor, I change the way the fraction looks, but I don't change its value. Now this is certainly a lot of writing. Normally what you'll do is You'll look at the fraction, say 6 eighths. You'll think of what divides evenly into 6 and 8, 2. Divide by 2 leaves you with 3. Divide by 2 leaves you with 4. And here's the simplified form. We can also say this is written in lowest terms. I can't represent variables with these circles, but I can write them in factored form. So a, well that's simply a. a squared, that's a times a. And I don't have to put a dot, a letter next to a letter means to multiply. b to the third, b times b times b over b. And now, just as in the previous example, notice I divided by a common factor. Here's my common factor of 2. Down here, the common factor might be a little harder to notice, but I have a common factor of a and then b. So the factor that's common to both the numerator and the denominator is a times b. So just as up here, I divided numerator and denominator by the common factor. I'm going to divide numerator and denominator by the common factor of AB. And really, AB over AB is just a strange looking one. 
So I'm not going to change the value. I'm only going to change the appearance of AB to the third over A squared B. Well, what's this going to leave us with? It might be kind of hard to see what's happening here and think about it. But notice when we divided by 2, we canceled that and we were left with 3. Here, when I divide by AB, I'll cancel those and I'll be left with B times B, or simply B squared. When I say canceled, it actually becomes a 1, but you don't have to write it as long as you have something else in the numerator. So with the denominator, a squared b, when I divide by ab, when I divide by ab, I'm only left with a. So whenever you're given a fraction with variables and exponents, you can write it out in factored form and then, in effect, cancel the common factors. You can also use the rules of exponents. And especially as these exponents get larger, you're going to need to use the rules of exponents. So this is a to the first power. I'm going to put in that first power because I'm going to refer specifically to these exponents. Your base of a is the same. We're dividing. So with the rules of exponents, I can cross that out and put a 1 as long as I subtract this exponent from this one. This will leave me with a to the first power. To the first power, but I don't have to write that one. Looking at the b's, the bases are the same. This is b to the first power. Using the rules for exponents, Whichever exponent is smaller is the one that I'm going to get rid of. So I can cross this out. I get a 1. So instead of b to the first power, I have 1. So long as this exponent gets subtracted from this exponent. So b to the 3 minus 1 is b squared. And notice what we have here is the same as what we ended up with here. The biggest number that will divide both 12 and 20 is 4. So if I want to write the factored form with 4 revealed, I can write 3 times 4. And for 20, if I want to write the factored form, or I should say a factored form, uh, I'd be 5 times 4. And then to show this numerator with the variables in factored form, it's just going to be x. And then for y squared, y times y. And in the denominator, we simply have x times y. So when it's written in this form, you can just visually identify the common factor. 4, x, y is common to the numerator and denominator. So 4xy is the greatest common factor. This is what I'm going to divide by. So I'll have to do the same to the denominator. And this can be thought of as a strange looking one. 4xy is my common factor. I'm going to divide out 4xy, so I'll be left with 3y in the numerator. And if I divide out 4xy, I'll simply be left with a 5 in the denominator. Now, writing out a factored form is a lot of work. I think you can do it with less writing. Think of a number that divides both 12 and 20, 4. Divide by 4 you're left with 3. Divide by 4, you're left with 5. Using the rules of exponents, we'll start with the y's just because that's going to be a little easier to explain. 
if dividing the same base, in this case y, you look at the exponents, this y is y to the first power. Using the rules of exponents, I can cross this out. Effectively, it all becomes a 1 if I subtract the exponent from the other y term, and 2 minus 1 is 1. By the way, I'm not usually going to write this whole number 1, and I'm not usually going to write the exponent of 1. They're just understood to be there. Now with the x's, each one has an exponent of 1. So using the rules of exponents, if I cross one of these out, it becomes a 1. If I subtract that exponent from up here, the other variable that's the same, but 1 minus 1 is 0. Anything to the 0 power is itself 1. So x to the 0 power becomes 1. The reason for anything to the 0 power being a 1 is a little beyond the scope of this video. When I talk about negative exponents and more explicitly all the rules of exponents, I'll cover why anything to the 0 power becomes a 1. So what's left standing? 3y to the first, so just 3y, over 5 times 1, so just 5. And notice that's what we got here when we wrote it out the long way. You might want to pause the video and just see if you can simplify this. I wouldn't suggest writing it out in this factored form. The numbers and exponents are going to get quite large eventually. Um, I would just see if you can go directly to dividing out the greatest common factor and subtract exponents. So looking at 24 and 30, the greatest common factor is 6. Divide by 6. You're left with 4. Divide by 6. You're left with 5. Looking at the variables now, x to the 5th and x to the 3rd. Cross out x to the 3rd. This all becomes a 1. I don't have to write it. So long as I subtract 3 from 5. Again, usually I don't write this. 5 minus 3 is 2, so we have x squared. This is y to the first power, so I can, and compared to y to the fourth power, I'm going to cross this one out, subtract 1, I'm left with 3. I don't have to put a 1 here because I have other things in the numerator. So what's left standing? We have 4x squared in the numerator. And we have 5y to the third in the denominator. Now looking at these two examples, they're quite similar. One is the reciprocal of the other. And I'll simplify them to show when you are required to write the 1 for the canceled term. I'm going to use the rules of exponents. This is a to the first. So I can cross this out and put a 1 if I subtract this 1 from the a in the numerator. And 3 minus 1 is 2. So I have a squared over 1, but that can be written as a squared. Over here, this is a to the first power. So based on the rules of exponents, I can cross this out and put a 1 if I subtract this 1 from the denominator. And 3 minus 1 is 2. So now we have 1 over a squared. I need this 1. I can't leave air in the numerator. So in this case, this 1 was important didn't just disappear, it shows up in my answer.
If you would like some practice with these concepts, as long as you're at my website, I have a worksheet along with a detailed answer key.